In this tutorial, I will show you how to write a parameter callback with ROS2 and Python. And we are going to start with this very simple node here that, well, it does nothing, it just has three parameters. Okay, so as a quick reminder, you first need to declare each parameter and then you can get the parameter. So you declare it to say that this parameter exists within the node, then you get the parameter so you can, well, when you start the node from a launch file or from the terminal, you will set some parameter values and you can get those values here in your code. On top of that, you can also set, as you can see, I've done this here, you can set some default values in case you don't put any value for the parameters at runtime. And so that's great, but now if I try to modify a parameter after that I have started the node, well, nothing's gonna happen and we won't be able to get the new values for the new parameter values in the code. And to solve this issue, well, we need a parameter callback. So let's add directly a parameter callback here in our code. And how to do that? Well, you will need to add, so you can do this after you have declared and uh, after you got your parameters, you can add a callback with this self dot, so self is gonna be the node here that you inherit from with this structure, and then you see add on set parameters callback. Okay, so you can write this add on set parameters callback, and then you will need to provide a callback function. As you can see, that's gonna get a list of parameters. So this callback function, we need to create it. All right, that's what I'm gonna do here. Def, let's call it param callback, Okay, to make it simple, self, and then what we receive is a list of params. So I'm gonna keep it like this, and inside I'm just gonna put pass for now, so that I can put in my callback, self.param callback. All right, and with just this, whenever you modify a parameter when the node is alive, okay, so basically when the node is spinning here, then this, parameter callback will be called and it will be able to receive all of the new parameters. So all of the new values that have been modified. Now there is one thing that's, well, that's specific to maybe VS code and a few text editors when you can have auto completion and nice syntax highlighting with ROS2 functionalities, you can actually specify a type. So with params, we don't have any type here. You can see it's any. So we, will, we won't have auto completion for the parameters list but we can add a type here and I'm just gonna add list of parameters. And to get parameter, I need to do from rclpy.parameter import parameter. Okay, so that I can put parameter here. Just like that. And actually it is list with a lowercase, not an uppercase. And if you wonder how you can also get uh, this syntax highlighting here and auto completion, well, in VS Code, make sure that if you go to extension, make sure that you have the ROS extension installed, okay, from Microsoft. So just install this extension, maybe reload VS Code, and you should have the auto completion. Okay, so what we can do in our parameter callback, well, I'm just gonna put a comment now, we can process the uh, so the values and at the end we will need to return something we will need to return a set parameters result so we need to import that from so you just need to do that from rcl interfaces dot msg import set parameters results just like that and this is what is expected okay from this callback so you need to return that. So you can do set parameters result here. And inside you will need to put successful, just like that, is equal to, and then I'm gonna put true. It can be true or false, okay, depending on if you can correctly process the values. All right, so you add the parameter callback here with this function, then you create a callback, you get a list of parameters, we're gonna see how to process the values and then you return set parameters result with successful true or false. So that's how you create the parameter callback structure. Now let's see what we have. So let's see what we receive. And I'm simply gonna do for 
param in params. Okay, so we create a for loop and we just go through each of the element of the list. And here what to do, well, I'm going to simply just print the what we have in the param. Okay, I'm just gonna do a simple print like this with vars and param. So we can just print whatever, so all of the fields inside param. Okay, just see what we get. All right, so in this callback, we just print all of the params that we receive and then we return successful true. Okay, we don't modify the params yet. I'm just gonna do that in a minute. But for now, let's test this. Okay, so I have already built the code with a symlink install, so I don't need to build it again. So make sure that you build the code if you want to test it. And I'm gonna run with ROS to run tutorials. So that's the package I have built. And then params callback, that's the node. I'm not gonna specify any parameter here because well, we already have default values. So I can set them if I want, but I can just also use the default values. It's not really important for this tutorial. And so when the node is running, I can do ROS to param list to see the parameters. All right. And I can do ROS to param, let's get one. ROS to param get with the name of the node and then the name of the parameter. So let's get battery percentage warning. And you can see we get double value is 15. That's the default one. Okay. Now let's try to modify it and let's see what's gonna happen in the code. So ROS to param set with the name of the node, the name of the parameter, and let's put 12.3. I'm gonna press enter. And what we have, so we have first set parameter successful, okay? And on the left here, we have, as you can see here, some information, so what we have received, what we print in the parameter callback. So we can already see that this was successful, okay? We can enter this parameter callback whenever we modify a parameter for the node, and we can also get some values. You can see we get the type, which is a double, we get the name, which is this one, the, the exact one we have modified here, and then the value is 12.3, all right? So you will see that for every parameter, we get three things. We get the name, the type, and the value. And so now let's actually finish this callback and let's update the values. Okay, so let's say that when we receive the battery percentage warning, when we receive a new value for this, we want to update the value, the attribute that we have in the code so that we can use it for, let's say, for using some publishers some some other functionalities of the node. So I'm gonna remove this print here. And what I can do is say, for example, if, param dot name, just like that. So we have the name uh, attribute is equal to the name of the here, the name of the parameter. Let's use single quote. So if, so we go through the, the list of param and if the param name is battery percentage warning, then what we can do is do simply self dot battery percentage warning. That's the class attribute we have here is equal to param dot value. Okay, so you can see to get the name, you do dot name. That's a property, not a function. So don't use parentheses. And then you can do param dot value to get the value. One quick note is if you want to get the type, you can do param dot type, but actually with an extra underscore. Okay, it's a bit different here. So name, value, and then type with an extra underscore. And those are the three values you can get from a parameter in the callback. All right, so now what we have done is we just say that, well, if we receive this parameter, we update the value with the uh, new value. So now we can use the new values for parameters in our code directly. And what to do with it? Well, the thing is here, we just modify this class attribute, but maybe this will lead to an action. Like for example, if I change the port here, I have a camera device port. If I changed the port, then maybe I will need to disconnect and reconnect the camera. But don't do that in the callback, okay? The callback should be something that goes very fast, that ends very fast. So what you can do is maybe set a flag somewhere and use a different thread so that you can disconnect and reconnect using the new value that you got from the uh, parameter callback, okay? So any class attribute that you just need to modify, do it here. But if you need to do something that's gonna take some time, then don't do it in the parameter callback. 
All right, and now, well, we might want to also validate the data because I could just put whatever I want here, all right? So we would want to validate two things. To validate that we have the correct type, okay? I don't send, for example, a string or a Boolean if I need to send a float number. I could validate this and I could also validate the data itself, okay? So if I want to send here, as you can see, that's a percentage warning. So the percentage should be probably between zero and 100. So if I send a negative number, I should not take this into account, okay? So let's validate the data now. And the first thing is actually you don't need to validate the type. Why? Because it's already down for you, okay? When you start to set, so when you set a value for a parameter, uh, either here in the terminal from a launch file or here using the default uh, parameter. So when you set a value, it's also going to detect the type and set the type automatically. And you can see here before we did ros 2 param get, we got a double value. So now let's say I want to modify it. So I'm just going to run the new version of the node, uh, which is going to update the value. Well, that's the same thing anyway. Let's try to modify. So here it was still a float number, but let's try to put 12. You can see setting parameter failed, wrong parameter type, it expected a double and it got an integer. And I can do the same with, I can do true. That's a Boolean not working. And uh, let's just put here quotes and that's a string. Actually, that's uh, not a string. That's interpreted as a boolean still. Let's just put hello. And you can see now we have a string. So anyway, we are safe with the type. So we know that when we get into this param callback, as you can see, nothing, well, nothing happens. Um, maybe I can print something here to make sure, but nothing will happen. So we are sure that we get to the parameter callback only with the correct type. So the only thing we need to validate now is the value. Okay. And so we can check, well, if we have the parameter name battery percentage warning, maybe we can do if param dot value, let's say it's greater or equal than zero and param dot value is lower, let's put strictly lower than 100, for example, let's use also decimal. So we just validate that the value is between zero and 100. In this case, I will set the value and just maybe uh, do a self dot get logger with info, let's say changed param value. And maybe I can do else. Then we're going to print a warning or an error self dot get logger dot one. So well, it depends what kind of problem you have here. Here, I'm just going to put one, but you can put error maybe. And let's say could not change param value. Maybe explaining the, the reason, okay? Should be between 0, 100. And well, I could also return here set parameters result with successful is false, okay, because I could not set the parameter, all right? So I check the name. If the name is uh, the one, so for the battery percentage warning, I'm gonna also make sure that the value is correct. If it's correct, then we can set it, and then we're gonna return true. And if it's not correct, then, well, we can return false. It depends, you can return false, or maybe continue to uh, process the other params, etc. Okay, you can add many if here. Okay, I have the if param name, but then you can also have another if param, uh, actually it's gonna be here, if param dot name is equal to, and then maybe the camera device port. Okay, you can do an if for each parameter in the follow. -up. So let's try this one. Okay, let's run it again, just to clear. And let's run it again. Okay, let's set, so let's set the parameter to a correct value first. So let's put 16.6. Okay, you can see changed param value. 
So set parameter successful, we got here. Now we know that the, the percentage warning is 16.6 instead of 15. And let's try to do minus, for example, minus 16.6. .6. And you can see we have a warning here, could not change param value and setting parameter failed. All right, so it failed. Why? Because, well, the mechanism worked, but we have decided inside the code to say that it failed because the value was not correct. Thank you for watching. Now subscribe here to get more tutorials in the future. Also check out my online courses if you like what I teach. Links in the description. And see you in the next one.